This may be their only opportunity to compete at the big, biggest stage. And if you don't compete, and if you don't compete, then you'll make it easier for other athletes to win. Not competing against an opponent goes against uh, these principles and against the values of fair play and sportsmanship that have served the Paralympic movement so well since its inception in 1948. The Paralympic movement prides itself on celebrating diversity, embracing differences, and discouraging discrimination. To finish, I hope now that the decision has been made, the focus can switch back to sport. Our hosts and many athletes have been preparing for this event for several years now. Let's show the world what we can do being united. Thank you. Thank you, Jitska. We will now open the floor to questions. So if you have your question, please raise your hand. And I think is the format that you go to the microphone in the middle of the, uh, of the channel here. So if anyone has any questions, please raise your hand and I will invite you to go to the microphone. We take the gentleman here. So my name is Lee Rini. I am a journalist with the Kiev Post in Ukraine. Uh, I also have been writing for the IPC since 2017. Mr. Parsons, I was very much looking forward to meeting you. Uh, this is not easy for anyone in Ukraine right now. Uh, this wasn't what I was supposed to be doing here. I'm a journalist, an English language journalist in the country. No other journalists were allowed to travel out of the country. They're not allowed, even if they wanted to. My first question, and, and please forgive me, I do have a couple because there's no other Ukrainians here to ask these questions. My first question is, I want to know what you would say to Yevhen Malashev's parents. Yevhen is a, was a biathlete on, the, on Ukraine's national junior team. He was killed yesterday. He was killed yesterday in a bombing in Kharkiv. You talked earlier about giving athletes the chance to compete. He will never get a chance to compete again. So on behalf of his family, I want to know what you would say to them about allowing athletes from the aggressor states to compete when he will never get that chance. Well, the only thing I can say to his family is that, of course, we regret what is going on in Ukraine. I cannot even start to imagine the pain that this family is feeling at the moment. Again, my country is not at war. My family is not protecting themselves from bombings in the subways of Kiev, as I know that many people are doing at the moment. So I cannot, I, it's very, I cannot even start to imagine the pain that they are feeling right now. So I can only tell them that my deepest thoughts are with them, my prayers. And unfortunately, they will not see their son competing here in Beijing. And this is absolutely not fair. It's disgusting. It's against humanity. But again, the decision that we took was based in our constitution. We do not believe that by not following the rules and regulations of the International Paralympic Committee, which the laws that makes us viable and possible as an organization and as a movement that took us this far, will ever uh, change what, uh, what, is going, what happened with their son. Unfortunately, Russian athletes competing here as neutrals, not competing here as neutrals, will not change what happened. And this is a crime against humanity, what we're seeing here. So I can only sympathize with them, try to, try to. I cannot even imagine how they should be feeling at the moment and for not seeing him competing at the highest possible level here. Uh, no one is happy. No one here is, uh, thinks that what is happening in Ukraine is normal or even acceptable. 
but again we do have to follow the rules of our own organization uh, under the risk of having our uh, decisions overturned we cannot we don't have the authority to ban the russian and belarus athletes uh, but the general assembly has that's why we are calling the extraordinary general assembly to do that so i apologize but this seems to be a rehash of what happened eight years ago when russia was the host of the paralympic games and first invaded ukraine this isn't a new war this has been going on for eight years you're talking about uh introducing legislation uh or bylaws to deal with breaking the olympic truce can you explain why this wasn't done when they did this in the first place eight years ago no i don't think i have an explanation that for that fact why in 2014 uh, it was not introduced uh, any legislation to say that the Olympic truce was not uh, when it's broken it was a member it was a breach of the membership obligations of any country I cannot explain you uh, why that was not the case and I know it's not only the second time it's the third time the Russia breaches the the, the Olympic truce but this is the same war that's the sorry this is the same war as 2014. It's the same war as the, uh, the, this, this war is not something new. It has escalated to a completely new level, but it's going on for eight years. I agree with you. Uh, the last question I have here, um, I'm just wondering how, how vigorously will the IPC enforce its ban on protesting? For example, will federations be penalized? for their athletes refusing to, pe to compete against athletes from the aggressor states? The first thing, can you repeat the last part of your question, sorry? Will federations be penalized for their athletes refusing to compete against athletes from the aggressor states? The only difference I would like to make in the last part of your question, and I do understand that Russia is aggressor state, but the athletes here that were born in that nation, they are not the aggressors. And I think it's important to make that distinction. From the they, 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 uh, I agree with you, they are from the aggressor state. But the athletes here, they are not soldiers, they are not the aggressors. And I think we need to treat them with the same respect we treat athletes from any other nation who earn the qualifications law to be here. Specifically on your question, we will act when and as it happens, you know, I think hypothetical situations it, uh, are difficult to articulate on that, but we will deal uh, with that when and as they happen. And what is your name? Can you, can you? Lee Rini. Lee Rini. Look again, I cannot even imagine how painful it is to be Ukrainian now. I try to sympathize, I try to empathize. It's difficult. I'm, my country is not a war. Again, my family is not hiding themselves in the subways of the capital of my nation. We do recognize the seriousness and the magnitude of the situation. We just try to separate politics from sport. We do not believe that the, the response to the Russian government will be to ban their athletes, not respecting our own constitution. If they break the rules, of the international laws, we will not break our own laws. We cannot do that. But we do understand how painful, we try to understand how painful it is to be Ukrainian these days. That's why we made a huge effort together with the Ukrainian Paralympic Committee to bring the athletes here. Because the president of the Ukrainian Paralympic Committee, he said to me two things. Of course, he said, look, we would like to see the athletes from Belarus and Russia out. And I said, look, I respect that, Valerie. And he said, but our athletes want to compete. And then we made a huge effort to bring them here. Uh, together with them, together with Ukraine, all the credit to Ukrainian Paralympic Committee, to the IPC, specifically the Ukrainian Paralympic Committee. I hope they are able to share with you, share with the world their journey to get here. It's a fantastic, it's a fantastic piece of, uh, uh, 
of human resistance and resilience, things that only can happen most probably at the Paralympic Games. What these athletes are doing to compete here, it's outstanding. It's, they are heroes just to be here. But again, we cannot, because of that, recognizing all the effort, recognizing what is going on, to not follow our own, own rules. Otherwise, where do we draw the line in the future? And I do understand your feelings. I do respect them. Um, I see you're wearing with pride the national colors of Ukraine. You should do that. And this is what we would like to see, the Ukrainian athletes here competing winning, losing, as it happens with every sportsman in the world, but uh, honoring the colors of their country, which is something, as you said, athletes who were born in the ag state, aggressor state, they will not have the opportunity. And this is something that I think they will regret, but it's up to their government to explain to them why they will not do that. But I do respect your pain and your emotions right now. Thank you, Lee. Do we have any further questions? Wakako, just here. Thank you. Wakako Yuki from your museum, the president. Um, uh, one uh, uh, first question go is a uh, uh, small follow up. Yeah, I I think you just mentioned uh, talking to Valerie, I mean, Mr. Shishkovich. Was it um, after you made the decision, you have already communicated to Ukraine and delegate? No. We have communicated to all the National Paralympic Committees uh, in writing. I haven't spoke with Valerie since we took the decision. I spoke with him a few days ago. I was not even in China when we spoke because of they started this journey to be here and Valerie is with his athletes so no I haven't not sp I haven't spoken with him mm -hmm. we will speak tomorrow I see of course with all the respect to what you have gone through today the heavy decision um, but it seems to me that um, um, the IPC is asking Ukrainian athlete uh, to peacefully compete uh, in, in the competition while knowing that their families and cities could be uh, in imminent danger uh, from governmental aggressors. Um, are you, uh, do you believe that it's humanely possible for your Paralympians? I think these athletes, they have fought the battle of their lives to be here, not only in the last few years to qualify, but the, just their journey to be here. I do not believe the Ukrainian athletes, they are coming here to be aggressive with athletes from Russia or Belarus. I think they are coming here to compete and to make Ukrainians proud in this very difficult moment in the history of the nation. So I think and I'm absolutely sure that they, if they did what they, if they did all of that to be here is to compete and make their country proud and not to fight against athletes and not be aggressive and not be, if they can be aggressive in, while competing and, and put all the strength, all the anger in having the best possible performance and taking all this frustration, yes, that's, that's, that's what I think they will, should do. But they should not waste the opportunity, something that they have fought so hard to do exactly what the aggressor wants them to do, which is to have, you know, lose their mind and do something that they regret for the rest of their lives. The, Yitzka has mentioned here, the pinnacle, the moment of their lives, is here at the Paralympic Winter Games. So I do believe that they will focus on that. I hope they will do that. Understanding again their pain, their frustration, and that when they see um, athletes from Belarus and Russia, of course we understand that that feeling will be negative. But we hope, as top athletes that they are, that they can focus on the competition. Kako, just to add on to that, I think in the Paralympic movement we always talk about human resilience and I think the Ukrainian delegation being here is, is the greatest example of human resilience we've ever seen in the Paralympic movement. We always talk always about as well as, as challenges as being opportunities and we have the world's eyes on us right now. They may not be agreeing with the decision but if we can show unity in people and use this platform to promote the fact that we can bring athletes from 48 different nations 
to come here and compete together in peaceful circumstances and show that when you set rules, you abide by them. I think that sends out a very strong message to the world leaders. And we need to do that. What we can't do, what we can't do just because others are, is, is run away from our moral obligations and, 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 and the rules of what we've set. I mean, if we start breaking our own rules, then, then what hope is there for, for, for competition in sport? We, we just tear up the rule book. We've got to stick to the, to the core principles that have got the Paralympic movement to where we are today. And one of those is fighting discrimination and promoting inclusion. And that's what we need to do here. And by bringing the nations together, we, we, we've got to send out a really strong message of peace because that's what the world needs right now. It needs peace. Question from the back there. My name is Jean Saint-Ange from Radio-Canada. I've been covering the games since 2008 here in Beijing. My question is for the athletes representative. You said that you have the responsibility to represent all the opinions, that these opinions were, were very mixed. Did you talk to the Ukrainian athletes and how did they react when they knew, when they learned that they would face athletes from Russia and Belarus? Thank you for your question. Um, I was able to talk to the Ukrainian athletes before this decision was made, so we did not know what was going to happen. Um, so I did take their uh, opinion into consideration and I also brought it to the board and the decision only has been made this afternoon. So after that, I have not been able to speak with them th yet and I am hoping to be speaking to them tomorrow. I think just to add on to that is, do you think it will be well received? Well, to be honest, I do not know that, how they are going to react. I, I would love to get back to you tomorrow when I have their answer. Look, I think we all appreciate difficult decisions and never universally accepted. We totally knew that when the board was making the decision today. But as Yitzka said, one of the themes that was coming out from all the conversations of the athlete community was to treat athletes fairly. And that's what we've tried to do today. There's, a, there's been a lot of talk in sport in many years, and for the last few years, about athlete welfare. We have two delegations here who have trained for four years to be at this moment. Where, if we were to send them home now, just because of their leaders, through no choice of the athletes, that, I think, is not right. What we've done is the, the, the harshest possible punishment we can do within the framework of our rules. If we'd have banned Russia today, all that would have happened is tomorrow they'd have gone to the courts and then we'd have seen the RPC competing in the, as the RPC in the medals table and we would have seen the Belarus National Paralympic Committee competing as they were. This decision ensures neutral Paralympic athletes. Those athletes can, can compete as an individual. And that's what we've tried to do today, is, is listen to the athletes who said, treat people fairly. That's what we're asking for in the Paralympic movement. We want people to be treated fairly in society. It's what we fight for every single day. That's our cause, that's our purpose. But as I say, the difficult decisions are never going to be usually firstly accepted. And we just have to face that, unfortunately, today. Any further questions? Question from this gentleman here. And my name is Masaki Karaya from Kyoto News. Uh, ask questions in Japanese. No, it was not unanimous. 
他の意見はどのような意見が出たのでしょうか、ロシアやベラルーシの選手たちをあの大会から排除するべきだという意見も出たのでしょうか。We had different opinions、uh, that went from not taking any action to banning、uh, Russian athletes, but the vast majority of our board have decided、uh, what we are announcing here at the、uh, in this occasion. No, that is not something that we do. A decision made by the IPC governing board is a decision that it's、uh, defended by the whole group. We, we, can, we do not disclose if it's three votes, ten votes.、Uh, what I can say is that it was not unanimous because you asked. But、uh, we don't disclose the number of votes and we don't say who voted for what. It's a group decision. Yes, some, some members have expressed their view,、uh, but at the end of the discussions, the vast majority voted for the measure that we are communicating this evening. ありがとうございます。すみません。最後に一つ実務的な質問させてください。メダルテーブルにはえっとカウントしないということになってますけれども、これはえっと例えばロシアやベラルーシの選手が1位、2位、3位になった場合はメダルは授与されるけれども、それを NPC が獲得したメダルとしてはカウントされないというそういう認識でよろしいですか。Yes, they, if they win medals, they will get the medals. If they get the gold medal, there will be a ceremony with the Paralympic flag, the Paralympic anthem. But you will not see that added to the medal table anywhere. Because the NPA is not, and, and the, the two neutral、uh, teams, they are not participating as teams. They are as a new group of neutral, neutral athletes. So you will not see them in the medal table. Yes, athletes will receive the medals. When we say that it's not going to be in the medal table, they will not act i n g as a team. So you will not see that in the medal table. But yes, the medal will be handled to the athlete. Thank you very much. Well, and just on a, a technicality, the, the RPC. Will be NPA, Neutral Paralympic Athletes, and NPC Belarus will be known as PNA, Paralympic Neutral Athletes. So we need to do the three letter coding in order for the results system. But neither of those delegations or those codes will appear on the medals table. Do we have any further questions? We have a question from the back there, and then we'll come over here. Uh, thank you very much.、Uh, Hiroki Tora from Masai s h i m b u n、uh, Thank you for taking my question.、Uh, question to for the president and the chair of、uh, Athlete Council.、Um, uh, I know there's not much time、uh, to the opening ceremony, but would there be an opportunity for you to explain、uh, directly to the athletes before the,、uh, the game starts? The athletes of all nations, you mean? Yes, yes. Well, before coming here, we spoke with the NPC, the president and secretary generals of the National Paralympic Committee is present here. Tomorrow morning, we will be at the chef de mission meeting to、uh, speak with the chef de mission.、Uh, we will not have the opportunity to put all the athletes together to explain to them. We are doing this through the National Paralympic Committees, we are doing that through the chef de mission, so the leader of the The respective teams here in Beijing.、Uh, of course, with the athletes normally reach out to the, to the、uh, Athletes Council. But any athlete that wants the, to, to sit and talk and understand better, we are open to that. Again, we are very democratic, very transparent. That's why we're here tonight to explain.、Uh, but that is no opportunity, and they are in three different villages to have all the athletes gathered to explain that to them.
Thank you very much. Thank you. A question over here to the left-hand side. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Taku from NHK. Um, thank you for the opportunity to have to have uh, questions. And just to Japanese, I'd like to ask you a question. Well, today, the convention is going to be postponed for a few days. The convention is going to be postponed for a few days. The convention is going to be postponed for a few days. The convention is going to be postponed for a few days. The convention is going to be postponed for a few days. The convention is going to be postponed for a few days. The convention is going to be postponed for a few days. The convention is going to be プラスニュートラルアスリートということでよろしいでしょうか。その点を確認させてください。In the opening ceremony, they will be as neutral, so no flag from RPC and no flag from、uh, National Paralympic Committee of Belarus. I didn't get and、uh, doesn't really understand your question on 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 the numbers, but that's I think is a From what I understood your question, yes, we will have 46 national Paralympic committees on the medal table. The two NPA is just a, 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 a way of grouping them because you have to, to attribute a code, a national code, a code of three letters to every single athlete. But their results will not be grouped. You will not see in the medal table NPA X number of gold medals,、uh, gold, silver, and bronze. You will not see that. Their team does not exist here. Their team does not exist here, but we do believe that individual athletes who have earned their qualification to these games, they have the right to compete here. Question from the middle here. Hi,、uh, David Waldstein, New York Times. I'm just wondering that all these other organizations that have banned the Russian athletes, FIFA, UEFA, Formula One, etc. They made the, what? What has separated you? Do you think from all those other organizations? Is it just the principle of your rules? I mean, do they not have those similar rules? Every organization has its own constitution, its own rules,、uh, and of course, we are based in Germany, so we are governed by German law. Some of these organizations you mentioned, they are based, sorry, in different nations, so they are governed by different laws. Do you know? I'm just curious if you know offhand if they have similar things and they just decided, you know what, we're going to ban them anyway. No, I don't have the information、uh, in what they have base、uh, of the suspensions or,、uh, to, let's say, the legal basis for them to do that, because at the end of the day, they have their own constitution, their own rules and regulation, different from ours、uh, or not. But、uh, we do believe that. We are following our own rules, our own regulations, and the rules、uh, and the law of the country we are based on. Could I just ask the, the three board members if, when you have the the、uh, meeting, to determine how you should go forward in the future, whether you will vote that a breach of of the truce is something that would warrant being、uh, kicked out of the games in the future? We do not vote, as board members. We do not vote. But if you ask me, if I had a vote, yes, I would. Do we have any further questions? Okay, we go just here, and then Mukako, we come to you, and then we close. The Hello,、meeting. I'm journalist from Latvia, by Barunze. I wanted to ask.、Uh, If、uh, other athletes from other countries are allowed to show their support、uh, for Ukrainian people and somehow in flags or symbolic, or will there be so some consequences against them for showing support? Yeah, I can answer that one. So, so we have、uh, rules which have been produced following 18 months of consultation with the IPC Athletes Council. Those rules are very transparent. They're available on the IPC website under the Beijing 2022、uh, homepage. <clears throat> the rules from our, the views from our athletes' council and, and also from the athlete community when we did this consultation process before Tokyo 
was that the field of play, the podium, and the ceremonies should be protected from any form of, of, of what would, could be classed as a, a protest or, or sharing the views which is slightly outside of, that would be waving flags and such like. However, if athletes want to share their views in the media and via social media and show their support there, that's all well within the rules of, the, of what we have here. Yeah, but this is not ordinary situation and you said it that uh, people should be united. And, uh, I get that, but we've, what we've also said today is that we've made a, a decision that's based on our rules. And here we've got to stick to the rules again. What we can't do in this situation is just say, look, we, we abandon our, our core principles that got our movement to where we are. The rules are there, we need to keep them in place. But what we're saying is that athletes can share their views by all means in media mix zones, press conferences, social media. But the athlete community told us during an 18-month consultation, please protect the field of play, please protect the podium, and please protect the ceremonies from any form of, 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 of protest. So we've got to listen to the athletes there. And we, when we did the consultation with the athletes, we gave them a whole range of scenarios which included a war. And the, 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 the view was protect those areas. So again, we've got to listen to the athletes here and we've got to enforce the rules that we spent 18 months consulting with the athlete community on. Thank you. Okay, we've got Wakako and then you, sir, will be the last question. Sorry, one, uh, no, two technical uh, follow-ups, please, uh, to the President. Uh, you said there's no team. Uh, will Russians be allowed to, Russian, well, uh, Russian-based uh, uh, individual athlete will be allowed to participate in the ice hockey as a team? And if so, what could be their team name? Well, the, as Craig has mentioned, the and neutral Paralympic athletes and the Paralympic neutral athletes. As a team? They will compete in team okay. sports, they will compete, yeah, as and a also, team. Um, you talk about um, future um, emerging, I mean, uh, extraordinary uh, assembly, general assembly. And uh, my understanding, of course, is that even if you would decide at the time to create some kind of cloud, clause uh, to make it mandatory for uh, any membership uh, to follow the Olympic truth in the future, that cannot be applicable to what happened here. So in a way, you cannot use that ground uh, to ban uh, Russia or Belarusian um, NPCs uh, in a legal term. Am I correct to understand so? Yes, we cannot retroact. We cannot uh, uh, approve, and this is, needs to be approved by our General Assembly. We cannot approve an, a new rule and retroactively apply them to suspend or terminate membership of any member. I see. And if governing board cannot uh, punish Russia and Belarusian NPC, uh, although it seems that constitution does have some cloud for governing board to suspend their membership, do you think that um, when it comes to General Assembly and uh, you discuss about uh, the suspension of Russian or Belarusian NPC at that time, do you have or your General Assembly membership have any ground uh, to decide uh, upon it? The General Assembly has the right to suspend or terminate membership in a different way compared to what the board can do. Mm -hmm. We can only make that decision to suspend. We cannot terminate membership, but we can suspend if there is a breach of the membership obligations. And that was, again, the breach of the Olympic truce is not a membership, uh, it's not co against a membership obligation. So we as the board, we cannot suspend uh, any of these NPCs now. That's what we want to change in the future, but we cannot make that change to our own constitution. Only the General Assembly can. Thank you for the clarification. Thank you, Kako. Final question, Aaron.
Devin Haru with CBC Sports for President Parsons. Just moments ago, Ukrainian athletes have issued a joint statement saying with bombs raining down on Ukrainian citizens, the decision made by the IPC today is another blow to Ukrainian athletes and citizens. How do you respond to that? Well, I do understand their feelings and do understand they, they are coming from a country that is at war. We do understand their emotions. We do understand their reactions. The, the situation here is that we as a board, we cannot make our decisions based on our emotions and our reactions. Uh, we will put this organization at risk. Uh, what I will respond to them is that the best way that they can express their pride in being Ukrainians is to do what they do best, which is compete at the highest possible level in the field of play here in Beijing. I think this is the way they can express the strength of the Ukrainian people, is winning as many medals as possible in the field of play here in Beijing. This is what I will tell them. I understand, I sympathize, I can only imagine the pain. Uh, you know, I never experienced anything even close to what they have experienced. So I do understand and sympathize with their feelings. But we do have a responsibility here. And what I would like to tell them and encourage them is that they put all this energy into the field of play and, again, make Ukraine proud. OK, we will bring tonight's press conference to a close. Apologies for the late evening. Uh, we look forward to seeing you during the rest of the games. Thank you very much, and have a good evening.
the 50 the fifth plenary meeting of the 11th emergency special session of the general assembly is called to order the assembly will continue its consideration of agenda item 5 entitled Later dated 28 February 2014, from the permanent representative of Ukraine to the United Nations, addressed to the President of the, Gen of the Security Council, S-2014-136. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of the Solomon Islands. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, Mr. Secretary General, Excellencies, I take the floor to speak on this important agenda in my national capacity. Solomon Islands is following with great concern the developments in Ukraine and deeply worried about the worsening situation. As a peace-loving nation, Solomon Islands reiterated its principal position for peaceful coexistence, non-interference, refrain from the use of threat or force against the territorial integrity of any state. We deeply regret the intervention into Ukraine by its neighbor, the Russian Federation, and call for immediate de-escalation of the situation. In that respect, we call on all to exercise maximum restraint, put aside all provocation, and restore our faith in our rule-based international order. As we preserve and respect Ukraine's independence, sovereignty, and territorial integrity. Solomon Islands calls on all parties to settle international disputes by peaceful means. We welcome talks currently taking place between Ukraine and the Russian Federation. We call on all parties to listen more and better understand each other. We trust that this dialogue will bring a glimmer of hope for a sustainable, peaceful outcome. We fully support efforts made by the UN Secretary General and call for a global unified approach to support the talks, embracing diplomacy and dialogue over confrontation and hostile postures in Ukraine and the region. Solomon Islands had a call on all countries to preserve the principles, spirit, and purpose of the United Nations Charter with open hands of friendship and not with a clan's fist. We in the present must look to the past as we chart our way forward. We must never forget the United Nations was created under the ashes of a world war. My people of Solomon Islands have lived through what consequences a world war can bring. Never again must the world go through another. Never again must humankind suffer its brutal consequences. We are already inundated with global challenges, including the COVID-19 pandemic, climate change, and sea level rise. As a small, vulnerable state, Solomon Islands is deeply concerned that the situation in Ukraine is diverting mass-needed attention to a global development agenda as we continue to combat climate change, improve the quality of all people, and deliver on the sustainable development goals and the 2030 agenda. Solomon Islands stand in solidarity with all who have lost loved ones and express great concern on the worsening humanitarian situation. We commend initiatives of neighboring states to protect the lives of the vulnerable population. We need each other more during this difficult period. Let us use the multilateral tools available to seek permanent peace, for the stakes are just too high if we fail. Solomon Islands will vote in support of this resolution. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of the Solomon Islands. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Myanmar.
Mr. President, Mr. Secretary General. At the outset, we welcome the convening of this emergency special session. We thank you, Mr. President and Mr. Secretary General, in this regard. This emergency special session is timely, and it would allow all, of, all countries, small and big, to raise our voices on the serious situation Ukraine is facing and our concern in the state of affairs of this universal organ, the United Nations. Myanmar always adheres to and takes firm position on the territorial integrity, independence, and sovereignty of all countries. Therefore, Myanmar condemns the invasion of Ukraine and, and provoke attacks against the people of Ukraine. These acts are flagrant violation of the United Nations Charter and international law. Myanmar calls on the calls on to respect the sovereignty, independence, and territorial integrity of Ukraine. We have been following with great concern the situation on the ground in Ukraine. It is regrettable that the situation is further escalating with intensifying attacks of the Russian, Russian Federation. As a result, many people have been killed and hundreds of thousands of people left their home. The people are suffering even in the severe cold weather. We call on immediate cessation of hostilities and attacks on Ukraine. Myanmar understand and share more than others the suffering that the people of Ukraine are encountering. The people of Myanmar are facing similar horrible suffering resulting from the inhumane acts, atrocities, crimes against humanity committed by the Myanmar military. Due to the military's excessive use of force and indiscriminate attacks on people, as well as their inhumane and brutal acts, many houses, religious facilities, healthcare facilities, schools, and family have been destroyed. And accordingly, hundreds of thousands of people have to leave their respective places and became displaced people in addition to number of people dead and injured. The displaced people and victims include people from vulnerable groups such as people with disability, elderly people, women, girls, and children. I wish to commend the neighboring countries of Ukraine, which open their borders and extend warm reception of Ukrainians and other nations who escaped from the terrifying attack. We also thank all member states who support Ukraine in every possible way. I appeal them to continue to do so and do more. Mr. President, the UN Charter clearly begins with, I quote, we, the peoples of the United Nations, determined to save succeeding generations from the scorch of war, end quote. I wish to further recall that, quote, we, the peoples of the United Nations, to unite our strength to maintain international peace and security and to ensure by the acceptance of principles and the institutions of method that armed force shall not be used, save in the common interest, end quote. Excellencies, dear colleagues, it is time for all of us to stand with just it and stand with the principle of the UN Charter. Myanmar stands in solidarity with the people of Ukraine. In doing so, Myanmar co sponsor the draft resolution and will vote yes. Justice, freedom, and peace must prevail all over the world. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Myanmar. And I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Pakistan.
Mr. President, Pakistan is committed to the fundamental principles of the UN Charter, self-determination of peoples, non-use or threat of use of force, sovereignty and territorial integrity of states, and specific settlement of disputes. Equally, Pakistan upholds the principle of equal and indivisible security for all. These principles must be consistently and universally respected. Mr. President, Pakistan remains deeply concerned at the recent turn of events. This reflects a failure of diplomacy. Prime Minister Imran Khan has regretted the latest situation between Russia and Ukraine and said that Pakistan hoped that diplomacy could avert military conflict. We have since repeatedly stressed the need for de-escalation, renewed negotiations, sustained dialogue, and con continuous diplomacy. All efforts must be made to avoid further escalation of violence and loss of life, as well as military, political, and economic tensions, which can pose an unprecedented threat to international peace and security and global economic stability. As consistently underlined by Prime Minister Imran Khan, the developing countries are hit the hardest economically by conflict anywhere. We hope that the talks initiated between the representatives of the Russian Federation and Ukraine will succeed in bringing about a cessation of hostilities and normalization of the situation. A diplomatic solution in accordance with relevant multilateral agreements, international law, and the provisions of the UN Charter is indispensable. Pakistan also supports all efforts to provide humanitarian relief to civilians in the affected areas. The government of Pakistan is most concerned about the safety and welfare of Pakistani citizens and students in Ukraine. The majority of them have been evacuated. Those who remain will be evacuated soonest. We appreciate the cooperation of the Ukrainian authorities as well as the Polish, Romanian, and Hungarian governments in this context. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Pakistan. And I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Djibouti. Mr. President, Mr. Secretary General, at the outset, Djibouti welcomes the convening of this emergency special session of the United Nations General Assembly to address an urgent matter, the unprovoked aggression against Ukraine. It is a matter of deep regret that the Security Council failed to act in unison after the veto cast by Russia, thus effectively undermining the capacity of this vital organ to exercise its primary responsibility for the maintenance of peace and security. We often lament the inability of the Council to respond decisively to emerging crises. The refusal expressed by a majority of member states to be paralyzed into inaction is a testament to the commitment of member states to ensure that the UN remains relevant in the face of vexing and complex security challenges. Djibouti unequivocally condemns what is, in our view, constitutes an egregious breach of international law and the most fundamental principles of the United Nations Charter, in particular the obligation of all states under Article 2 of the United Nations Charter 
to refrain in their international relations from the threat or use of force against the territorial integrity or political independence of any state. If a country has legitimate security concerns, we urge that country to prioritize using tools as expressly contemplated by Article 33 of the Charter, which obligates party to, parties to a dispute that is likely to endanger peace and security to seek its solution among other means, negotiation, mediation, arbitration, or judicial settlement. We welcome the offer of good offices made by the Secretary General and reiterate the call by the African Union to establish an immediate ceasefire and to open political negotiations without delay under the auspices of the United Nations in order to preserve the world from the consequences of planetary conflict. No argument, no pretext can justify the use of force, the all out war, and the brutal violence unleashed on Ukraine and its people. Mr. President, we are appalled by the continued attacks targeting civilians and civilian infrastructure. We are heart sick to watch the gut-wrenching images of civilians fleeing the violence and seeking refuge in neighboring countries. We echo the call made by the Emergency Relief Coordinator and the High Commissioner for Refugees for unimpeded humanitarian access so that aid is delivered to those in need. Ukrainians may have decided to valiantly defend their country and not surrender, but if the war does not stop now, they may not survive. As a distinguished Ukrainian representative powerfully stated, if Ukraine does not survive, international law will not survive. The aggression against Ukraine places under stress the system of international law and international relations that the Charter puts into place. Let us not allow decades of efforts to strengthen the rule of law and revitalize multilateralism go down the drain. Djibouti will therefore vote yes to reaffirm its solidarity to the people of Ukraine. It will vote yes to uphold the UN Charter. It will vote yes to reject the use of armed force and any pretext in aggression against a sovereign country. It will vote yes in support to the sanctity of borders. Monsieur le Président, nous sommes rassurés par les mesures prises pour faire face aux actes de discrimination à l'égard d'Africains qui ont ému nos populations à travers le continent. Cependant, nous sommes alarmés par la persistance de représentation qui marque du saut du négatif africain, ainsi que par le traitement médiatique de soi-disant experts qui opèrent une distinction entre les réfugiés fuyant les conflits au Moyen-Orient et les réfugiés fuyant la guerre en Ukraine. Uh, les the conflict in the Middle East and those fleeing the conflict in Ukraine. The wars are the same regardless of where they are, and they always lead to the same devastating consequences. We are at a critical moment in the history of the United Nations, and we must put an end to all the conflicts and we do everything to prevent any further conflicts. It is within our reach, and we do have the resources. Let us mobilize the political will to put an end to them. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Djibouti. And I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Bhutan. Mr. President, Mr. Secretary General, Excellencies, we meet today in this August Assembly for the 11th Emergency Special Session of the General Assembly to address the alarming situation in Ukraine, a fellow member state of our United Nations. It is significant that owing to deadlock in the UN Security Council, this is the first time in 40 years that the provisions of the Uniting for Peace Resolution are being invoked. Bhutan has closely observed with deep concern the rapidly escalating conflict on the ground. We join others in calling for the respect of Ukraine's sovereignty, independence, and territorial integrity within its internationally recognized borders. Perched atop the Himalayas, even the folds of our mighty mountains cannot shield us from the reverberations of events thousands of miles away. 
Today, core principles of the UN Charter and a rules-based international order are at stake, endangering international peace and security far beyond the borders of Ukraine and Europe. Mr. President, each and every one of us, big and small, rich and poor alike, have, on admission to the United Nations, ascribed to the purposes and principles enshrined in the Charter. Bhutan made that solemn pledge over 50 years ago. These are principles all member states are beholden to, but for small states, they serve as the guarantor of our existence. Bhutan is a small and peace-loving country, firmly avowed to peaceful coexistence and good neighborly relations between states. Bhutan adds its voice to the chorus within this hall in defense of the UN Charter, in defense of the principles of sovereignty, independence, and territorial integrity of all countries. The threat or use of force and acts of aggression against another sovereign state can never be accepted. We cannot condone the unilateral redrawing of international borders. Bhutan will therefore support the resolution which is now before the Assembly, and in doing so, we reaffirm the call for the respect of international law and the core principles of the UN Charter. In closing, Mr. President, Bhutan expresses its regret at the reports of growing numbers of casualties and loss of innocent lives as a result of the crisis in Ukraine. Our hearts and prayers go out to the families of those who have lost their lives in the escalating conflict and the hundreds of thousands of others who have been displaced and suffer in its wake. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Bhutan. And I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Lao People's Democratic Republic. Mr. President, Mr. Secretary General, as a peace-loving nation, the Lao PDR firmly upholds the principles of the United Nations Charter and its obligation under the international law. Towards this end, the Lao PDR has continued to pursue its consistent policy of peace, independence, friendship, and cooperation with all nations. As a country previously suffered from the scourge of war, the Lao PDR knows too well the endless negative consequences it will cause to the innocent lives. We believe what is entailing is not of the interest to any party. The Lao PDR has been closely following the current developments in Ukraine, which is complex and fragile. We commend the UN and countries which have offered humanitarian assistance to the affected people. Mr. President, we remain skeptical of the unilateral sanction. On the contrary, we would also be mindful that the sanctions imposed could entail long-term impact on innocent people, including the global community at large especially during the pandemic period. Therefore, we call on all parties concerned to refrain from any action that could further fuel the escalation of tension and seek peaceful solutions and restore peace and security. Towards this end, we support the ongoing effort to find a peaceful settlement to, the, to this situation through diplomatic means including the recent peaceful negotiation held at the border of Belarus. It is important that legitimate security concerns of all parties be taken into account. Mr. President, we have heard at this emergency special session during the past two days, divergent views and opinions. Nevertheless, one common call loudly echoed in this assembly hall is to call for peace 
which can only be achieved through diplomatic means. It is our fervent hope that through its, this diplomatic effort, peace can be restored. Peace which constitutes the heart and soul of our organizations, United Nations. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Lao People's Democratic Republic. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Cambodia. Mr. President, Mr. Secretary General, Cambodia expressed its grave concern on the situation unfolding and human suffering as well as for the loss of life in Ukraine. We strongly believe that a last-lasting peace can be achieved only through a peaceful dialogue and negotiation. All parties must ensure that all civilian and civilian infrastructure are protected access to humanitarian assistance to the people in and around Ukraine must be ensured during this difficult time. Cambodia fully support the Secretary General effort in addressing the humanitarian crisis and to find a peaceful solution in Ukraine. On 26 February, the ASEAN Foreign Minister released a statement urging the concerned party to seek a peaceful resolution in accordance with international law the principle of the UN Charters. Cambodia has its firm position that all member states must respect sovereignty, territorial integrity, and political independence of other member states. With that, Cambodia has co-sponsored the draft resolution and will vote yes. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Cambodia. And now I give the floor to the distinguished representative of Azerbaijan. Mr. President, the situation in and around Ukraine is a source of extreme concern which necessitates urgent actions to de-escalate and find peaceful solution in accordance with international law. Azerbaijan deeply regrets that the ongoing crisis constitutes to cause significant casualties, in particular among civilian population. We express our deep condolences to the families of those perished and wounded. We call for strict adherence to international humanitarian law. Civilian lives and civilian infrastructures must be protected and safeguarded at all times. The evolving humanitarian crisis on the ground requires expedient measures to alleviate the impact of current situation on civilians. Proceeding from this understanding, Azerbaijan has already rendered, on a bilateral basis, humanitarian assistance of medicine and medical equipment and other first need essentials to the people of Ukraine. This situation needs to be settled through peaceful diplomatic means in full compliance with the norms and principles of international law, guiding interstate relations, including respect for the sovereignty, territorial integrity, and inviolability of borders. Strict compliance with the norms and principles of international law concerning friendly relations and cooperation among states and the fulfillment in good faith of the obligations assumed by states are of the greatest importance for the maintenance of international and regional, regional peace and security. Azerbaijan reiterates its call for dialogue without delay to prevent the situation from the further escalating 
escalation and underlining the necessity of direct negotiations between the parties. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Azerbaijan. And now I give the floor to the distinguished representative of Belarus. President, Secretary General, the Republic of Belarus will vote against this draft resolution. We all bear our share of responsibility for what is currently happening in Ukraine. Eight years ago, Были подписаны Минские the Минск соглашения. Совет Безопасности принял соответствующую резолюцию. Ни Совет Безопасности, ни Генеральная Ассамблея, ни международное сообщество в целом убедить или заставить украинские власти выполнять положения этих документов. Все эти восемь лет Украина фактически находилась в состоянии гражданской войны, поскольку киевские власти не желали садиться со своими сограждами из Донецка и Луганска и отказывались учитывать их законные интересы. Все эти восемь лет в Донецкой и Луганской народных республиках гибли люди, в основном гражданское население, старики, женщины, дети. Оперативный параграф 8 внесенной резолюции, проекта резолюции, лицемерно призывает все стороны выполнять Минские соглашения. Очень хочется спросить автора этого проекта, где вы были все, господа? Почему вы за эти восемь лет так и не смогли заставить Киев выполнить положение этих документов? Под бесцеремонным давлением со стороны США, Канады, стран Евросоюза, которые, естественно, считают себя эталоном демократии, оказались и ООН, и ОБСЕ, и Совет Европы, и вообще все международное сообщество, которое, которые так и не нашли в себе сил и мужества отреагировать, адекватно отреагировать на преступные действия украинских властей. Нас спрашивают, зачем вы вообще вспоминаете события прошлого сейчас, когда в ходе вооруженного конфликта гибнут люди? А наш ответ на самом деле очень прост. Мы так и не извлекли надлежащих, правильных уроков из событий Второй мировой войны. Международное сообщество так и не осознало, что любые ростки неонацизма в любой стране должны быть немедленно уничтожены. То, что происходит сегодня в этом зале и за его пределами, является очередной яркой демонстрацией, очередным ярким подтверждением двойных стандартов со стороны США и их союзников, жертвами преступлений которых уже стали сотни тысяч людей в Югославии, Ираке, Ливии, Афганистане. Мы категорически отвергаем обвинения в адрес Беларуси в вовлеченности в незаконное использование силы против Беларуси. Я вам открою страшную тайну. Мы действительно вовлечены. Президент Республики Беларусь Александр Лукашенко лично предпринял максимальные усилия для того, чтобы обеспечить контакты между российской и украинской, украинской сторонами. Наша вовлеченность сегодня таким образом 
заключается в организации переговоров между Российской Федерацией и Украиной и в обеспечении всего необходимого для их проведения. И мы искренне желаем успехов участникам переговоров. Многие страны в своих поступлениях ни слова не сказали об этих переговорах. Мы понимаем, что они никогда не произнесут название нашей страны в положительном или хотя бы в нейтральном Хочется спросить этих людей, вас всех, вы просто не хотите упоминать Беларусь или вы не желаете успеха этим переговорам? В качестве реакции на события на Украине некоторые страны привычно схватились за свой излюбленный инструмент – санкции. Мы хотим вас предупредить, именно вы будете нести всю ответственность за то, что применение санкций в отношении, например, белорусских коллегиальных удобрений приведет к обострению экономических и социальных проблем и росту голода и в ваших собственных странах, и в странах, которые находятся в километров от Беларуси. Объявленные санкции уже не являются точечными. Они направлены на улучшение экономики и ухудшение уровня жизни Применяемые сегодня санкции, некоторые договорились до того, что объявляется экономическая война. Это худшее проявление экономического и финансового терроризма. Представители некоторых государств рапортуют о полной 